So what needs to be done then, in your view, in the short term to avoid what, what you describe as a blackout horror? I think the most important thing that we need to do in the very short term is for a separate group to the AEMO management to work directly with their planners to establish a new baseline for the very short term. We need to get people in a room who can ask questions about what it means to be operating the grid reliably all the time. My big concern is that it's very much a scenario-based planning. The specific strategic objective of the CEO of AEBO is to achieve 100% intermittent penetration of renewables in the grid as soon as he possibly can. The CEO of the person keeping our lights on cannot have that as his, his strategic objective. So we need to have the strategic objective is affordable, always on, low cost electricity for the people of Australia and a decarbonisation of the grid over the longer term. We've lost the plot because we're trying to pursue renewables, not low carbon energy, and we're doing it in a way that comprom compromises the fundamental integrity of the electricity grid. I believe it's you, incumbent you've on also, the Prime Minister... You want... Yep. Yeah, no, no, you've, you've called for a lift on the ban on nuclear. What yep. do you say to the argument, and you would, have, you would have heard this many times, that it's too costly and will take too long? Well, I think it's, it's really important to recognise that the cost of nuclear plants is high because they are very highly integrated plants, and when you switch them on, they provide reliable, effective electricity. But, you know, it's been argued that, that it takes too long, in Finland, they have a plant now, a new nuclear plant. It was expensive and it did take too long. But what people forget is that when they switched it on, the cost of electricity dropped by two thirds. So we're focusing on the input side of the equation, but in fact, the cost in the pocket of the consumer is always lowest when you have reliable nuclear electrons. This is true in France versus Germany. It's true in Sweden versus uh, Denmark, for example. There are many examples that are already available to the public and to politicians and to the planners to look at the effect of nuclear in a grid. Certainly, it's expensive to build a plant, but it's a great outcome and it's good for consumers and it's good for the planet. So how long would it take, in your expert view, from from lifting the ban to getting a nuclear power plant in place, whether it be one of the small modular ones or a larger, more traditional approach? My view is, with a sound regulatory baseline and commitment from state and territory governments, as well as the federal government, we could, with a focused plan, build a small modular reactor facility on an existing coal plant, for example, within 10 years. And the larger plants, I think, would take uh, maybe 12 years. That's what they achieved in, in the United Arab Emirates. The key thing is the state and federal governments have to work together and the regulator has to be re rational. By that, I mean mm. that the regulator should give credit to the regulation that is done in other countries and that if a plant has been um, approved by another regulator, we do this with aeroplanes all the time, it's allowed to also be easily regulated in Australia. Yeah. Former CEO of the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, Dr Aidy Patterson. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Good to be here.